Welcome back everyone. I'm assuming you already caught up on part one, right? If you haven't, don't worry. Just click here to watch it before checking this episode. For those who are up to speed, no need for introductions. I mean, no need for the video intro. So let's straight down to the business. Okay, here we are, step two, sealing the deal. Now, this is where our potential client from episode one becomes your current client. They've been stoked with your email and all the information you provided, including the steps to book you. So they paid the retainer, signed the contract, woohoo, your job is done. You can sit back and wait till the session day. Nope, your job's not finished yet, Rafa. You can leave your client hanging until the session's day. There are some crucial things to cover with them. And here they are. When someone pays you for a future service, they expect at least a confirmation that you received the payment and some sort of reassurance since they send their money to someone that they never met before. 99% of clients will email you seconds after sending the retaining payment just to check if you got it and were not part of a photographer scam. <laughs> Dumb money, man. Happy to take it. And guys, believe me, I have my family photos taken every year by many photographers and even though I'm familiar with the process, I still expect good follow-up and clear instructions from them. Everyone operates differently, and the last thing that we want is unclear communication along the way. Not all photographers excel in client engagement. Our prices have never been lower. Son, you have Certainly to talk louder. Never been lower. Louder, I son! Her. Our prices have Wait, never sorry. been lower! Stop it. Heat! That is totally inappropriate. So by providing great communication with your clients, you can really step your game and book more clients. So the best thing to do at this stage is to give some peace of mind to your client. Let them know you received the retainer and that their session date is saved. Yes! Yes! <laughs> and here's what I suggest you to do. Create a sweet email with the following things. Confirm that you received the retainer, express gratitude and at the same time inform that their date is safe. Just with that simple step, you create relief to the client and they will appreciate it. You can stop right there and include a final message, something like, I'll follow up with you when we are close to the session date. Or you can take a step further and include the following in the same email. Offer spots in your calendar for a quick video call consultation to better assist and prepare them for their upcoming session. Well, that will serve a few purpose. It helps break the ice and allows both you and the client to get to know each other, avoiding any awkwardness on the session day. Some people are very shy, so knowing you in advance will make them more comfortable. It allows you to go over session details, including location, how you work with the families, how to prepare the kids for the session, to ensure they have fun, and general tips for a successful photo shoot. Also, to talk about wardrobe for the session. Discussing wardrobe is crucial. Trust me, not everyone has a sense of outfit combinations that work well for photography. The last thing we want is for them to turn up dressed like they're going to a Coachella festival. No, no, no. With that video call, you can share and provide guidance on color scheme, outfit combinations, and even help them put together outfits using apps. I will dedicate an entire episode to this topic covering wardrobe assistance and those useful tools and apps. It is essential to remember that not everyone may want to follow your suggestions. And that is perfectly fine. Some clients have their own outfit preference. However, offering suggestions is important to the success of a photo session. It is a delicate subject and be careful because sometimes pushing that too hard can scare clients away. What? I will cover deep that in the wardrobe episode. Important note, the reason we discuss wardrobe early in the booking process is to make sure clients have plenty of time to sort out their outfits. Sometimes people leave it to the last minute thinking something will fit perfectly, but then it turns out to be too small or too big. They left scrambling to return, exchange it, and that can be a headache. By talking about outfits early on, we can avoid any last minute surprise and ensure smoother sailing as we move forward. And finally, make ourselves available to them in case they have any questions. 
Clients always appreciate it when you're open, like to check their text with photos of outfit combinations, asking what do you think? That is a great way for me to see what they envision in terms of outfit, and also that they care about make sure everything looks nice, which helps me plan the session better. There are some things that we talked about in this episode that are worth having in isolated episodes only on that, because there are plenty more to digest. But don't worry, I'll make them available for you guys soon. So I hope you have time to process all we have covered today because there's even more in the next and final episode of the Client Engagement Elevator Family Sessions Booking Series. In that episode, I will share some extra tips and how to automate some of this process so you don't spend hours crafting emails. Take care and I hope to see you in the next episode. Wait a minute, what did I just say? I cannot see them. Okay, see you then. Uh, I mean, ah, again. All right, you see me next time. Bye.